A small cork with an excess charge of plus 6.0 micro <coughs> coulombs is placed 0.12 meters from another cork which carries a charge of negative 4.3 micro coulombs. A, what is the magnitude of the electric force between the corks? B, is this force attractive or repulsive? C, how many excess electrons are on the negative cork? And D, how many electrons has the positive cork lost? So, we have two corks, two small corks, much like this cork right here, which are located 12 centimeters from one another. So they would look approximately like this, right there. We know the distance between the center of charges and the two of them is 0.12 meters, so we already know that is R. We know the charges, six microcoulombs and negative 4.3 microcoulombs. Part A, we're looking for the uh, electric force that exists between the two of them. Part B, we're trying to determine whether it's attractive or repulsive. Part C, we're trying to figure out the excess number of electrons on one of them, Q2 in this particular case. Part D is redundant, and I'll talk about why and why we're not gonna do it. But we are gonna do part E, a part that is not a problem in the book, which is to figure out the coefficient of static friction that exists between the uh, cork and the lab table in order to keep the cork on the lab table. In order to do so, we do actually need the mass of the cork, so we're gonna take a moment and mass this cork. This cork has a mass of 1.1 grams. The mass of the cork is 1.1 grams. Okay, first we'll figure out the electric force that exists between these two. Actually, let's do part B first, because we can do this part B before we answer anything else. Tristan, is it an attractive or repulsive force between these two corks? Attractive. Okay. You know this because? Um, because it has an excess charge. Ah, uh, it doesn't have to do with, it, unfortunately no, it doesn't have to do with that in particular. Why is it an attractive force? Mara? One positive. They are unlike charges. By definition from the law of charges, that means it's an attractive force. The equation for um, the electric force here, Janelle, is? Can you Sure, we're trying to figure out the electric force. What's the equation? Um. We have all of this information. Please give me all of the numbers. Uh, Greg? Uh, it's 4.3. And 6.0. Okay, this is, I'm, I'm impressed. Let's just go from left to right here. Let's start with the first thing. Kb equals... Right, yep. Yeah. What's K? K is... One point nine. Nope, Chris didn't help out. Times 10 to the crittenden? Yeah. And the 9. Times 10 to the 9. Gregor, Q1. It's 1. Alright. 6.0 MC. That's not an M. And then. 6.0 what? Show me the M in the book. Sam, help me out. With the what exactly? I don't know. We're stuck. I'm kind of well, stuck here. Um, I would uh, put both Q1, Q2, and coolant. As opposed to what? Um, microcoulombs. Why do we need cool? What is it about this problem that says you need to use coulombs and not micro coulombs? Grimmer. Um, the K has the C, the coulombs at the bottom, so they need to cancel out. 
note, the constant, Coulomb, the Coulomb constant has Coulombs in it. Therefore, we need to use Coulombs so that we can cancel this out. In order for this to work, we need one Coulomb on the top, one times 10 to the sixth microcoulombs on the bottom. Microcoulombs cancel out. We get six times 10 to the negative six Coulombs. We can do the same thing with the micro, with the negative 4.3 microcoulombs. One coulomb, one times 10 to the six microcoulombs. Microcoulombs cancel out. We get negative 4.3 times 10 to the negative six coulombs. Therefore, this needs to be six times 10 to the negative six coulombs and negative 4.3 times 10 to the negative six coulombs divided by the distance between the center of charges squared, or 0.12 squared. The electric force then is equal to. Seven with sig figs, negative 16, negative 16 what, Christine? Newtons, it's just a force. Don't make it more complicated than it is. It's a force, so it's in newtons, right? So negative 16 newtons. Just so you know, this <coughs> negative in our answer simply means it's an attractive force. That's what that negative means. Part B, we have answered. Part C is to figure out the excess number of electrons on this quark. Who can tell me how to figure out the excess number of electrons on the quark? Sean. Um, that's the... The goal is to figure out the excess number of electrons on Q2. So you take 4.3, which is the Q, which equals N, E. Remember, we go all the way back to the fact that charge is quantized. Q is equal to N times E, or in this particular case, Q2 is equal to N times E. We're solving for N, it's equal to Q2 divided by E, or negative 4.3 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs divided by E. What is the charge we're going to use here? Hoover? Sure, we need to, I need E, the fundamental charge. What am I going to use? No, that's, that was the electric force. I need the fundamental charge. That's okay, that was the force. You've got the fundamental charge for me here. Grimmer. What is the uh, negative 1.6? Why did you choose negative? Because it has positive or negative on, on the fundamental charge. Uh, because n has to be positive. I agree with that, but I, I understand that's a mathematical reason. I want a, a physics reason. I, I agree mathematically. George. We're dealing with electrons. Because we're talking about excess electrons, which have, by definition, a negative charge. So n, what is n, please? 2.687 times 10 to the 13. Times 10 to the 13? Yep. Okay, so with sig figs, we'll go with 2.7 times 10 to the 13th what? What of dimensions, please? Mari? Right. There are. Actually, there are. I know it seems like there, there aren't, but there are here, George. Electrons. Electrons, because remember, this is the excess number of electrons. So, to put it in perspective, Without scientific notation, 2, 7, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 electrons. Comma, 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 comma. Thousand, million, billion, trillion. In other words, on this quark, there are 27 trillion more electrons than there are protons. 27 trillion more electrons than protons. Going back to 1909, the Millikan oil drop experiment. Remember, he proved that the charge could only be integers of this. So he proved, well, the next charge that we could have would have 27 trillion and one electrons. Not 27 trillion point five, 
but rather 27 trillion and one. That was not an easy calculation. Part D is to figure out the excess uh, protons on Q1. Notice we just do the same thing. We used Q1 and we use a positive charge for 1.6 because we're talking about protons. That is redundant. We're not going to go through and do that. Instead, we're going to go through and figure out the coefficient of static friction that exists between the uh, lab table and the cork. Step one for that, she'll be, is to do what? Free body diagram. For those of you who come to me from a different class, please be aware that any time you are going to deal with forces, you need to draw a free body diagram. A free body diagram is a figure that shows all the forces acting on the objects. We have cork one, which has charge one, and cork two, which has charge two. Please give me a free body diagram of all the forces on cork one. Sam. Okay, we have force normal. Uh, force of static friction going right. And force of the electric force going right. The electric force. Remember, it's an attractive <coughs> force, so they're being pulled toward one another. Note, I don't need to draw all the forces acting on the other cork because it's just going to be a mirror image of all the forces acting on this one. We've drawn our free body diagram. David, what do we do next? Uh, Pick a direction. Uh, X. Okay, go ahead. Some of the forces in the X direction. Um, F, e is FE stands for what? Force. Crittenden, FE stands for? The electric force, keep going, David. Minus the force of static friction. Minus the force of static friction equals? What direction? direction? What's the acceleration in the x direction of the cork? Zero. Zero. Notice it's not going anywhere. So the electric force minus the force of static friction is equal to zero. In other words, the electric force equals the force of static friction. Normally, we would substitute in the equation for the electric force KQ1, Q2 over R squared into this equation. There's no need to do that right now because we've actually already figured out the number. So we're just going to leave the electric force on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, Clara, what are we going to do? Well, actually, we're going to do that in just a minute. What can we do on the right-hand side for this equation? Good. The coefficient of static friction times the force normal. So we're kind of stuck. We don't have anywhere else we can go, so as you said, we can now sum the forces in the y direction. Sum the forces in the y direction for me, please. Uh, Tristan? Force normal minus um, force gravity equals mass times acceleration in the y direction. Good. What's the acceleration in the y direction? Zero. Therefore, force normal equals the force of gravity, which equals mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Note, we can now combine these two equations. We have the electric force equals mu s times m times g, because the force normal is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Our goal is to solve for the coefficient of static friction. The coefficient of static friction, then, is equal to the electric force divided by mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Janelle, please give me all the numbers here. The coefficient of static friction is then equal to? Um, need all the numbers. We've, we've gotten to the point where we have, you know, in terms oh. of variables, we just need all the numbers here. Oh, um, negative 6 newtons. Is that what it says? Yeah. Oh, you oh, negative 16, sorry. Okay. Um, and then the mass is, is it 1.1 1 .1 grams? It is 1.1 1 .1 grams multiplied by G. On 9.2? 9.2. Nine, 9 okay. Okay, don't take this the wrong way, Chanel, but there are only three things wrong with what you just gave. Okay? And it's important to understand what they are, because these are all typical little things that people, mistakes people make. And we just need to walk through. Grimmer, give me one. Um, the mass should be converted to kilograms. We need the mass in kilograms. The mass, which is 1.1 grams, we need to multiply by one kilogram over 1,000 grams. 
grams cancel out, we have the mass of the torque is 0 0.0011 kilograms. So instead of 1.1, we need 0 0.0011 for the mass of the cork. Another one, Clay. Um, the negative 60 needs to be negative 16.1 of something. Got to be careful. You can't use rounded numbers when you're solving for something. You need to use the unrounded number or else you're probably going to get it wrong because in the end it's going to round incorrectly. 16.107. Last one. Sam. The electric force should be positive. Why? Because it's to the so let's go back to what the negative meant. The negative in this equation meant, Sam? Is that it's an attractive, an attractive force. So it had to do with the direction. We drew our free body diagram. We summed the forces. We've already used that direction. So do we use it again, class? No. Okay. You're not going to plug in the direction again. You only use it once. So we're going to use a positive number there, positive 16.107. So the coefficient of static friction that exists between the cork and the, or I suppose the minimum coefficient of static friction between the cork and the lab table is, Julian? Um, I have a question. Yeah. In general, can mu s be negative too? Or is it, can it, can The coefficient of static friction cannot be negative. Okay. We get a number and that number is, your Uh I want to calculate That's not a number. Well. George? 1,494.16. That's plenty. So with sig figs, 1,500, 1,500 what, your Trish? Uh, nothing. Nothing. The so the minimum coefficient of static friction between the cork and the lab table is 1,500. Sam? This is a little unreasonable. Is it a little unreasonable, you think? You guys remember the dog from first semester on the merry-go-round? Yeah. yeah. That poor dog. Yeah. This textbook not only abuses dogs, it also abuses corks. There is no way that this cork is going to stay there, right? They set up the situation and said, we have two small corks. Look, there they are. What's the electric force that exists between the two of them? They're not going to stay there. There's a, the minimum coefficient of static friction in order to keep these corks in place is 1,500. That's impossible. Unfortunately, the textbook set up an impossible situation again. Sadness.